Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I hope that you have been able to rejoice and be glad in it. This is Pastor Butler coming from the greatest church in the whole wide world, Cedar Creek Community Church. And welcome to our midweek worship experience. I pray that this week has been a good one for you. And, and, and I just pray that God has been doing great things in your life. And even in the midst of a bad situation, I just want to remind you tonight that God is still good. Yes, church, God is still good. And whatever it is you're going through, God can handle it. Whatever the problem is, God can fix it. Whatever the situation is, God can bring you out of it. There's nothing too hard for God. So you've got to remember that on tonight and trust in him and believe in him that God is setting things up to work in your favor. I know what's going on right now may not be good, but it's for your good. So tonight, come on, let's just celebrate Jesus. Let's give God glory. Let's give God praise. Let's give him honor for he is good and his mercy endures forever. While you're watching this, go ahead and share this broadcast. Share, share, share. Let somebody know that we are online and we are giving God the praise. Before we get into our midweek worship, I just want to remind you that this coming Sunday at 1045 a.m. is our family and friends day. Oh, come on out. Bring your family, bring your friends, bring everybody. They can sit in the car, they can get out in the chair with their mask on. Masks are required. I mean, two things are required for worship, your praise and your mask. Amen. We will praise God safely. Hallelujah. It's not out of fear. It's out of wisdom. Come on, somebody. Let me say that again. Not out of fear, but it's out of wisdom. So come on, bring your chairs, bring your tents, whatever. You can even sit in the car. The weather um, forecast seems to be good. I know it's been raining a little bit this week, but the weather for this coming Sunday and Saturday seems to be good. We're also having a cookout starting at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Another safe event. Bring your mask, your plates, some cards, some whatever you want to play, some um, fun games. Come on out on Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on our campus. We usually go to a park, but we want to try to keep it small and try to keep it safe as possible. So come on out this coming Saturday at 10 a.m. for our Family and Friends Day cookout. And then our worship service is the following Sunday, this Sunday at 10 45 a.m come on bring everybody out i'm sure it's going to be a great time in the lord safely as we give god praise even in the midst of this pandemic i don't know about you but i still gotta praise hallelujah i still gotta shout i still gotta thank you jesus even in the midst of everything that's going on god is still good and he is worthy to be praised amen so let everybody know and you'll see the flyer at the end of this broadcast and and let everybody know to come on out and i want to see every Everybody that's, that's able to come, come on out and have a good time in the Lord with us. We want to ask that you be, keep in the prayers. Those of you, those of us in our congregation who are dealing with bereavement, reach out to some of your members. Let them know that you're praying for them. Let them know that you're on their mind and send them a card or whatever. Just continue to pray for the saints. Some are still sick. Some are going through. Just call out your members, your friends, your family's name in prayer. Because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. There is much power in much prayer. Okay, let me say that one more again. There's much power in much prayer. Much power, much prayer. Hallelujah. No prayer, no power. I don't know about you. I want power, so I've got to pray. So let's go ahead and pray. So go ahead right now. If you have a prayer request or concern, put it in the comments if you want to. Put that person's name. Call them out even in the atmosphere that you are in. I pray that it will connect with my spirit as I pray to God right now. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise your name for truly you are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to be in your presence. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to read your word. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to praise your name. It could have been the other way. Last night could have really been my last night, but I thank you that I found joy this morning when I woke up. I thank you that you put breath in my body. You gave me the activity of my limbs. I'm in my right mind. God, I thank you tonight for you are good and your mercy endures forever. I thank you for all that you are doing. I thank you for how you have made a way thus far and what you're going to do to come in my life because you got great things in store for me. So we thank you tonight. 
We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. God, I thank you for the comfort and the strength that you are giving to the families who are dealing with bereavement, to the Stewart family. God, I ask that you, the young family, that you lift them up right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, continue to lift up. Hallelujah. Mother Holland's family, the Hollands and the Davis family. God, continue to lift up all those others who are still dealing with bereavements of a lost loved one. God, we thank you that you will give them the peace that surpasses all understanding, that you are their strength like no other. So we thank you right now for how you're lifting them up. We thank you, God, for how you're covering them right now with your loving arms and with your wisdom and with your power, your grace and your mercy. Thank you for God. Thank you, God, for how you make Way after no way, after way out of no way, under the way, over the way, God, through the way, God, I thank you for just being a way maker, God. Oh, God, there's so many things that we couldn't do on our own, but God, with you, all things are possible. So, God, we that's why we got faith. Hallelujah. That's why we believe tonight. Hallelujah. That's why we stand on your word tonight. Hallelujah. That's why we trust you tonight, because we know that we got a God that will always come through. Hallelujah. We got a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. He's with us always, even until the end of this very age. We got a good God. Hallelujah. We serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God, and we give you praise tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. So whatever it is, we say, Lord, do it right now. God, give us a release right now. Hallelujah. Release us from those things that have us bound. Release us from those chains because your word says whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Oh, we can be free tonight. We can be free tonight. We can be free tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. For your power. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. We love you tonight. We give you glory. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We magnify you. We honor you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean, God. Thank you for your forgiving power. You say, if we, confess our, if we confess our sins to you, you are faithful and just to forgive us of them all and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, we confess them to you tonight. We give them to you tonight. We are sorry, Lord. Wash us over again with your precious blood. Thank you, God. But how you doing great things for us. Thank you for this church, this wonderful church, Cedar Creek Community Church. God, keep doing great things for us. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. As we follow you, God, we know that there's nothing that we won't be able to accomplish. Thank you, Lord, for how you're making a way. We just love you tonight. Continue to be in God. Continue to do your do your good work. Hallelujah. Continue to do your great things. Hallelujah. Continue to work your miracles. Hallelujah. Continue to do what only you can do, God. And we won't even wait until you do it. We're going to praise you right now. Hallelujah. We're going to give you glory right now for you are good and your mercy endures forever. All the prayer requests, all the concerns, God, everything that we've been asking for, it is so, it is well, and it's already done. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. And everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Go ahead and share this. As we go into this word, something good is going to come out of this. Something good has to come out of this. St keep, don't go nowhere. Something good has to come out of this. A word of encouragement tonight. Something good has to come out of this. Come on, can we lift our hands in total praise? 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I will lift mine eyes to
trust you. Lord, we glorify you and we give you glory. We say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory. Come on, lift your voice and bless him. Come on, lift your voice and bless him. Hallelujah. We just get right into this word. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 8. Very familiar text, Romans chapter 8. And with everything that's going on in the world, with the killing um, of George Floyd, we just, it's its real hard right now. It's, it's just, it's a senseless murder that shouldn't have had to happen. And it goes on too much in America goes on too too much in America and, and and it's something that we shouldn't have to see on a monthly basis or weekly basis it seems like every time we look around something's happening something's something's going on to people of color and and it's so it's been going on for ages as a history teacher it's something that I have to deal with in this very sensitive t topic to go over with the young African American males and, 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 and young ladies that I teach and also those are different nationalities that but they have to deal with teaching that but not teaching from the bias of that I'm a black man that I, I shouldn't have to be scared to drive at different parts of the city or be scared of having been pulled over by the cops and something's going to happen to me because I'm not one that's going to commit a crime. But it, you don't have to be committing a crime to die these days. You, you, you're dying for just being black. And it's it just, it's, it's, that's just as simple as it is. And, and so, and, and it's hard with this, looking at this, you look on Facebook and I see this article now, it, it happened in Minneapolis and, and, and we just, people are protesting and the officers were, were, were fired. But it, it got to be more than that. It, it, we we have to stop dying we, we, it, from 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 the hands of those who's supposed to protect us. And so it has to be a solution. There has to be an answer. There has to be something that we can do. And uh, nobody really knows the answer. But the people who are have, who are in power, they have an answer that they can fix this when they truly show that they want to allow this stuff to happen. They want to allow people to kill people and, and when they're supposed to be protecting and they really don't have a reason to do it, to continue to, to work, continue to go without consequences. That's why this is continuing to go on because there are no consequences. I know growing up as a child, um, my mama told me my action had consequences so I know I couldn't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect not to get the same consequences so but we still see the same stuff happening over and over again but the only consequence is that the people of color are continuing to die but the people who are responsible for it are continuing to get off 
So until the people that are in power, who have the power to pass down judgment in the earth on these people, start passing the judgment that is due to them, these things won't stop. And so it's hard being a pastor during this time because I'm angry. It's hard being a pastor during this time because I, I, I don't have the answers. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to encourage you to, to, to not be mad. I don't know how to encourage you not to be angry, to be confused because I'm all of that myself. But what I do know know as a pastor, as a do know as a man of faith, that I can still trust God. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, I can still trust God. Don't lose faith in God. You hear all these people saying, well, the church ain't doing this, the church ain't doing that. But the, the church, they, they, they consider God with the church, but you got to realize it's a difference between church people and God. God is perfect. What he does might not seem perfect to us, but his ways are perfect. We may not understand it, but we have to accept it, accept what God allows. But you have to understand that we all have our human emotions, but in the midst of our emotions, we got to continue to trust God. God. And we have to know that regardless of what we are going on personally or what we are, we see people dealing with in the, in, in, in the world or around us, we have to know what this very, very familiar scripture in Romans tells us. Romans chapter 8, 28. And it says, and we know, and I know some of you watch this, you can recite it with me. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And I know another translation says, and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to the purpose of God. And let me, let me read it from the Message Bible. And they lump the, the, the verses together. So this is verse 26 through 28. It says, meanwhile, the moment we get tired in the waiting, God's spirit is right alongside helping us along. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition. He keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of, excuse me, that we, that that's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Every detail in our lives. But a life that's loving God is working together into something for our good. It's all of this stuff that don't fit together, that don't work, to, that, 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 that don't look like they go together, that don't look like it seems like it's going to fit or, or, or come together. It is working together for our good. So you got to look at every situation and say some good is going to come out of this. You might be saying, well, Pastor, what kind of good is coming out of this when somebody has died? I don't know. But I trust God enough to know that something good has to come out of this situation. People shouldn't have to die for more awareness to come to, to, to um, injustice, but that's just how history is. History repeats itself. But throughout history, one thing has remained constant is God. Regardless if you believe in him or not, God has always been there. Even if people don't believe in God, they always heard about him. People, that people still trust God because I'm going to trust him until the day I die because I know that every Everything that I'm going through, everything that I'm facing, it is working for my good. It is working for my good. Glory to God. It, it, it says, verse 26, in the same way, the Spirit, it helps us in our weakness. Lord, I need you to help me right now. I am weak. I can't do this by myself. I am weak in my spirit, God. I'm weak in my mind because this this situation, what's going on in the world, but but, but between coronavirus and this this, this senseless killing, I, God, I'm, I'm my spirit is weak. But I thank you, glory to God, that your spirit helps me in my weakness. I am so thankful that when.
when Jesus died, he didn't leave us alone. The, the word tells us he left us a comforter. He left us the Holy Spirit. And we're about to celebrate Pentecost coming. And, and, and that's when the Holy Spirit came down on the people. And they, he came like a mighty rushing wind. Glory to God. And they began to speak in other known tongues. And they were filled with power. And Jesus had told the disciples, stay in the city until you receive power. I thank God that we have received power by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is here to help us in our weakness. Lord, I need you to help me. Help me on this journey. Help me on this way. Lord, I need you to help me. My, 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 my spirit is weak right now, but I thank you that your spirit is helping my spirit. Glory to God. It says, it says, we don't know. This is still in verse 26, Romans chapter 8. He says, we do not know what we ought to pray for. God, I don't know right now. I don't know what I ought to pray for. God, I, I, I don't know what I... I, I, so much I could say I, I, don't, I can't even comprehend it I can't even put it into words What I want to say right now But guess what The spirit The spirit himself intercedes for us Through wordless groans So when you just sometimes You just got to mm, you just can't, oh my God, I can just imagine the family of, of Mr. George Floyd, the mom, and, and the mom is still living, or aunts, and, or some of the women in his life, or some of the, the elders in his life probably are just moaning and, and, and groaning right now because they don't have the words to say, and they're coming from a deep hurt, but I thank God, hallelujah, out of their moans, out of their groans, out of your moans and your groans, out of my moans and my groans, that the Spirit is making intercession for me, hallelujah, that is praying for me. Because he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit. Glory to God. Because the Spirit in the sea for God's people in accordance to what the will of God is. That's verse 27. And he who searches our hearts, hallelujah, knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit in the sea for God's people in accordance with with the will of God. You've got to know that you've got somebody that's fighting for you. You've got to know that you've got somebody that's in, the, that's in the trenches for you. If you can't fight, somebody's fighting for you. If you can't pray, somebody's praying for you. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that's making intercession for the saints right now, God. you We can't do nothing but moan, but keep moaning. While we're moaning, the Spirit, he, he's understanding, He. He's interceding, he's comprehending, and he's making sure that it's in the Lord's ear. That Lord, you got to handle this for the saints because they can't handle it by themselves. And because he knows our mind, because he knows our hearts, he searches our hearts and he knows the mind of the spirit. And we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. We got to make sure we love him during this time. You got to make sure that you love God. You got to make sure that you love him. You got to make sure that you truly, I mean, don't be playing. Just don't say it. You got to mean it. You got to show it. You got to act it out. You got to live that you love him. And you have been, a call, you have been called according to his purpose. Mind your shot. Glory to God. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. I'm at verse 29 now. That he might be the firstborn, firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those who he predestined, he also called. Those who he called, he also justified. And, and, and let me go to the message Bible on that one. Glory to God. It says, it says God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. Glory to God. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. Hallelujah. The son stands first in the line of humanity he restored. We see the original and intended shape of our lives there in him. After God made that decision of what his what made that decision of what his children should be like, he followed it up by calling people 
by name. I'm so glad that he called us by name. He called us. He, he gave us a calling. He, he put, we, we, we are his sons. We are his daughters. We are his children. We are the righteousness of God. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen people. We are a, a peculiar. We have those who have been called out into the marvelous life. That's what he called us. And he said, after <coughs> he called them by name, he set them on a solid basis with himself. God, we, we've been put on a firm foundation with the Lord. And then after getting them established, he stayed with them to the end, gloriously completing what he had begun. Glory to God. Man, th this, this work in you is something that God started at the beginning of the earth. And the Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And it says that he that begun a good work in you shall perform it. And I'm so glad that God is completing the work that he started in my life. I'm so glad that I will not die until my work is complete. So God, thank you for keeping me while you're still working on me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go down to verse 31. We're not going to stay on this too long because I just I, I just thank God. I, there's just so much going on. I just want us to know that we can still trust him. We can still trust him in the midst of what's going on. What then? Glory to God. This is my spirit is God. I thank you. What then shall we say in response to these things? Who? If God is for us, who can be against us? And this, this is really, really, really hard text right now. Because we say, well, God, if you're for us, it seems like the whole world is against us. But guess what? Even if the world is against us, that doesn't mean that this, it says, if God be for us, who can be against us? It's a question mark. This does not mean to say that nobody can come against us because people will come against us. But God is for us. That really means who can beat us. If God is for us, who can, who can, who can, who can, who can, who can fight us and win? Nobody. So even if we see this, it seems like, it really seems like the whole world is against us. Guess what? They can't win. We can't allow them to win. So we cannot stop speaking up. We cannot stop sharing posts when we see racist people and we see people who are saying stuff they don't have no business saying in these positions around hiding behind their keyboards, hiding behind their jobs. Let's start exposing these people for the races that they are and letting them know, uh -uh, you are not going to get away with this. It's time out for getting away with that. God has given us a mouth for a reason. God has given us a mind for a reason. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Let's stop being afraid. And the Bible, he says, not give us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I'm not telling you to go out there and fight because that's where the love, we still love everybody because Jesus loved everybody. But he gave us power to go out there and do it. And he gave us a sound mind. So better use that power, that love, and that sound mind to let these people know that you will no longer disregard us. You will no longer because slavery been over. Jim Crow and segregation been over. Holly, we got power, and we got power not just in the earth, but we got power in the spirit. So we got to know that if God, because God is for us, you can be against us, but you won't win. Glory to God. So, so you might say that they're trying to take me out, but guess what? God is for you. So regardless of who is against you, they can't win. That's why no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You got to know how to tie the word together. Glory to God, because God is protecting us, and God is greater than anything that can come up against us. He says, verse 32, he says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how Will he not also along with him graciously, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Glory to God. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that. Who was raised to life is at his right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 35. He, Pay attention to this one. Who shall separate us or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, <laughs> hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, 
danger or sword. There's seven things that they talk about. None of that shall separate us. Paul is asking a whole lot of questions right here. He's trying to put it in the minds of the Romans, the Romans that did, none of these things <clears throat> will separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. Don't allow any of these things to separate you. See, guess what? God never separates himself from us. Jesus never separates himself from us. Let's just imagine this is Jesus. He's always connected to us, but we allow these things to separate us. This is us. We, we, we leave him. He's still right here. He's not, he's not disconnected from us. He, we have disconnected from him. We have allowed, my God, we have allowed trouble to separate us. We have allowed hardship to separate us. We have allowed persecution to separate us. We have allowed famine, nakedness, danger, and sword to separate us. But well, Paul is telling us none of these things shall separate you. You have to make sure that you are connected to him. You have to make sure that regardless of what what is pulling at you? I'm so glory to God. Regardless of what is trying to tear you down, you stay connected. You stay fastened. You stay put. Stay with Jesus. Don't let any of this stuff that's going on right now, all of this stuff, this is a prophetic word. Trouble is going on right now. Hardship is going on right now. We're being persecuted. Some of the people are dealing with famine, nakedness, danger, sword. All of this is going on right now. But guess what? I don't know about you. I'm still connected. I show glory to God. I'm still connected and I'm not letting anything separate me from his love. Glory to God. I'm not letting anything, anything separate me from his love. Glory to God. Let me go to the message Bible. It says, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish I had an organ in here. I could tune up right there. With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Glory to God. If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, whew, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? The biggest sacrifice that God made was sending Jesus. <laughs> so anything else is, 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 is less. So if he did that, he would definitely do anything that you need for him to do. So let me go back to it again. He says, so what do you think? This is a message Bible. With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Jesus Christ. It says, and who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment. He's sticking up for us. Jesus is sticking up for you. Jesus is standing up for you. I pray, I thank God that right now for the Floyd family, Jesus is standing up for them. We got to make sure that we know that Jesus is standing up for us. He's sticking up for us. He's on our side. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. And it says, for we, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sleep sheep to the slaughter. Glory to God. And I'm continuing to read the message Bible. It says, they kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We're sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. My God. Glory to God. Jesus Christ. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That comes from, that's a prophetic word from Psalms 44 and 2. But Paul says, no, or yea, in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
Verse 38 says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Going back to the message Bible says, none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. Who, Jesus? None of this should phase us. That means that doesn't mean that we don't get angry, frustrated about it, confused about it. But it shouldn't push us away. It shouldn't kill us in the spirit. Why? Because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing. Nothing living, dead, angelic, or demonic today, tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. We've got to know that he loves us. Stay connected to him. But speak out. We've got to speak out. Something has to change. We've got to keep praying and believing that God will have to change the mindsets of those who are in power. God, let the government be on your shoulders one more time. Let people turn their hearts back to you and recognize the error of their ways. And people got to stop doing this stuff. But don't allow it to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Because in all this stuff, we are still conquerors. Hallelujah. In all of this stuff, we are still con conquerors. Guess what? With God on our side like this, with Jesus on our side like this, how can we lose? We won't lose, baby. Bro, sis, we will not lose because God is with us. And we know, Romans 8, 28, that all things, work together for the good of those who love them and who are called according to his purpose. We got to know that it's working for our good. God, something good has got to come out of this. I don't see it right now, but I believe that something good has to come out of this. I hope you believe that today. I hope you truly believe that today, that something good has to come out of this situation. It's all working together for the good. It's all working together for your good. It's all working together for our good. Something good is going to come out of this. Justice is going to come out of this. A change has to come out of this. God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for your reminder that nothing shall separate us from the love of Jesus. For your reminder that nothing can get in the way of your love because Jesus has embraced us. God, we thank you that we will stay connected to you. Regardless of whatever comes in our life, God, we will stay connected to you, God. We will not leave you, God. We will not stray away, God. We will not be like the prodigal son, God. We will stay with you, but we thank you that you have embraced us, God. We thank you that even in the midst of our confusion, even in the midst of our doubt, God, your love covers all of that. Your love never fails. Your mercy endures forever. So we thank you right now, God, that all things, everything in my life is all working out for something good in my life, God. So I thank you, God, that in all these things, God, I am more than a conqueror, God. I thank you for this reminder in the word that, God, even though I can't I don't, sometimes I don't know what to say. I can't just got to moan and groan, God, that the Spirit is making intercession for us. And I thank you, God, that Jesus is sitting right beside you making intercession and standing up for your people. So I thank you right now that you're looking out for us, God. So I pray a special prayer for this nation, God. Bring us together, God. God, racism has to go in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that's a trick of the enemy that's probably going to stay until the end of time, but give us power to overcome overcome. Like the, our ancestors used to say, we shall overcome. We shall overcome with you, Jesus. We shall overcome with your power because your word said we overcome by the blood of the lamb, which has already been shed. But the word of our testimony, we will testify about your goodness and let the whole world know just that you are God and you are still strong. You are still mighty. Stand up strong, God. Stand up mighty. Do a work in us, God. God, clean us up. If there's anything that's not like you in us, God, clean us up right now, God. 
Wash us with your precious blood. Forgive us of all of our sins. God, make us over again. God, I just thank you for this word. All things are working together for my good. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you that I'm on your mind. Thank you, God. Just keep the Floyd family, the family of that man, George Floyd, God, that, that senseless killing that could have been avoided. God, Lord, you do it. You handle the situation. God be God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. It is so, it is well, and it's already done. Amen. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Know that the Lord is the source of our strength. He's the strength of our life. That we will win. Hallelujah. With him on our side like this, how can we lose? Hallelujah. How can we lose? We can't lose. We won't lose because we always win. Be blessed. Be encouraged. And stay connected. Good night.